Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we come again saying thank you, Lord God. Lord God, we just ask that you continue to cover our city, Lord. Continue to cover each and every resident, our police, our fire, Lord God, and continue to cover our children. We thank you in all these things we do act in Jesus' name, amen. Clerk Golic, roll call. Alexander. Present. Spatelli. Here. Vanez. Here. Kalwinski. Here. Torres. Here. Tyler. Here. Emerson. Here. Rakos. Here. Warpo. Here, let the record show nine are present and in chambers. Item number three, Phil. Good evening, Hammond City Council. Mayor Tom couldn't be here this evening, so he asked me to step in. Um, I believe all of you received the first quarter 2022 revenue collections report from uh, Megan Flores, our city controller. Uh, very quickly, I'll go over that. The first quarter 2022 revenue collections were at $3,317,465.24, which break, break downs as such. Capital improvement, which is 62% of that, uh, the Capital Improvement Board will receive $2,056,828.45. Uh, mayor's discretionary, which is 15% of that, is $497,619.79. District's discretionary, which is 15%, divided up between the six districts, breaks down to each district receiving $82,936.63. The Gaming Advisory Committee, which receives 4% of that, is getting $132,698.61. And of course, the Rainy Day Fund, which also is 4%, is that same number, $132,698.61. And again, I believe everybody has a report, and there's also additional information that Megan has given you through that letter. The Gaming Advisory Commission uh, completed the process of awarding grants for 2022 this last Thursday on April 7th. Initially, we received 56 grant applications, requests for totaling over or almost $1.2 million. Uh, in the end, we were able to award grants to 52 not-for-profit organizations for a total amount of $550,582. So it was significantly higher than last year. Obviously with COVID last year, we had significantly less revenues to dole out. Uh, I really wanna thank the 10 members of the commission for all their hard work through the process. Uh, really quickly, the, the five members that the council appointed were Councilwoman Alexander, Councilwoman Venez, Councilman Rakos, Melissa Farrell, and Marcus Mabry. And the mayor's representatives were Marty Wilgus, Andrea Edwards, Lori Zolno, Loretta Flores, and Sharon Zaney. And I just will tell you that, you know, it wasn't always that everybody agreed every single time, but every time there was somebody had some different thoughts, we talked about it, we compromised, and we completed it really without any issues whatsoever. So thank you to all the people that, that were involved. I hope, honestly, we have the same group next year because it really was that, that uh, comfortable of a process. Lastly, uh, Mayor's Night Out is Wednesday, April 20th. It's at 6.30 p.m. in the second district. It will be at the Hub in downtown Hammond. I would suggest with all the construction that's going on there that you leave just a little bit earlier than normal and make sure you find parking prior to the event starting. But that's all I have. I'm happy to take any questions that you might have. Anybody have any questions? Mr. President. Councilman Tyler. Uh, Phil, can you give us a couple more updates? Um, one, uh, these are two pertinent to my district, but we'll love if you could share an update, uh, if you have a deeper one about the fence along Columbia Avenue. Happy to, um, I finally. I say it looks nice. It feels like we've been waiting a long time for this uh, moment. Um, I believe it was about two weeks ago that they actually started the new construction of the fence on Columbia. For those that are, that I know the council knows about this, uh, for those in the public that are just tuning in and aren't familiar, uh, this was a fence project that the city completed many years ago, um, I believe prior to Mayor McDermott being uh, in charge. And um, obviously the fence over time 
uh, due to weather and other issues, had become dilapidated. It became an eyesore. There were holes. It became impossible to repair. And so um, we came together, the city, the councilmen, to um, come up with a plan. We had to have every resident that has a home off of Columbia that had part of the fence on their property sign off on a paper allowing us to repair it. And like I said, about two weeks ago, they finally started putting in the new fence. And I know part of that, by the way, was supply issues that are going on in our country uh, due to COVID. It had nothing to do with the fence contractor being slow or anything like that. So um, I want to thank Councilman Tyler for his participation with that. That's going to really change that entire corridor when you see a new fence compared to what it looked like. Thanks. So, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. So the city is the owner of that fence now? So, so it's complicated. Uh, technically, the fence is on private property. The reason we were able to replace the fence is because the city constructed the fence initially, and there was no agreement or language in place that stated that the residents were going to repair the fence if something, you know, in the future. And that put us in, an, in, a, in a situation where, you know, nobody, the residents weren't repairing them for their own reasons. We're not picking on them or anything like that. Uh, but it came down to that the city had to step up and try and form an agreement with the residents so we can get it done. So technically it's on private property. Um, however, we did it legally. Um, we made sure we talked to uh, all the attorneys as we were going through the process. And like I said, a big part of that was making sure every resident signed a, an agreement with us, allowing us to replace the fence. So any future <coughs> repairs will be done by the city? Potentially that's the case. I would love it if um, there could be some conversations with the residents where they sign off on taking full responsibility for the fence that's on their property in the future. Um, like I said, unfortunately, the way it was done many years ago, it's kind of put us in a situation where we don't have a lot of leverage and potentially what you're saying is accurate. We may have to step up 20 years from now and, and do the same thing. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. President. Councilman Torres. Uh, back on the downtown project. Is 23 the timeline for that, where that whole uh, street's going to get completed and all that work down there? Um, and let me just say, Councilman Tyler, if you have another question, I'll make sure I hit it, because I know you said two things, so I don't want to forget that. Um, the, obviously, the construction, the Holman Avenue redevelopment project has begun, and we are fully expecting that it will be completed before the end of this year. So This it, year? It is a 2022 Ooh. project. That's correct. Now... You know, again, with everything that's going on um, with supply issues, um, I always want to put an asterisk on that and just say, you know, if there's some unforeseen circumstances that, that are out of our control, maybe there's a possibility that it could run over until 2023. But the plan is that's going to be completed by the end of this year. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Councilman Tyler. Yeah, Phil, my other question was just about the the date that we were planning on releasing the RFPs for the developments to the north and south of City Hall? Um, I might need to call upon one of our <coughs> economic development. Uh, I'll have Ann Anderson come up, our Director of Economic Development. For those at, uh, in the public that aren't familiar with this project, the city owns the property both north and south of City Hall. And uh, we recently had a meeting to talk about how can the property be repurposed to fit in with the neighborhood and the community, especially with the, the high school project that just took place across the street. The high school looks awesome. So we wanna do something that's gonna fit in well with that. And so we are in the process of coming up with requests for proposals to see what types of development could happen on both of those parcels. So if Ann, if you wanna come up. So thank you for your question about that, Councilman. Um, the two RFPs for the north parcels and the south parcels will be advertised in the Times on April 22nd with proposals due on May 3rd, and that's a redevelopment meeting. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Uh, Councilman Kowalski. RFPs are for what kind of construction? Uh, it's really asking developers 
what they would be willing to do at those sites. Obviously, it has to fit the zoning. I believe it's, it's a C4 zoning. Is that accurate, Ann? So whatever they propose would have to fit into our zoning. Um, but we're really opening it up to developers to say, hey, what, what would you do here um, that would be successful in the future but also works well with the, the neighborhood? So how do we determine like, who's the best bidder if they're bringing in different ideas? It would be the Redevelopment Commission would, would typically be the group to review the RFP submissions after they come in. <coughs> You're welcome. Any further questions? Further questions? Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Moving on, item number four on the agenda is the Common Council Scholarship Drawing. Uh, Councilwoman Alexander. Yes, Mr. President, before we get started, I wanted to just give a little history on the scholarship fund. The scholarship fund was established by WICO Industries in the year of 2000 by ordinance in the amount of $300,000 and administered by the Legacy Foundation. The income from the fund is annually appropriated for 15 one-time $1,000 scholarships for Hammond residents that are graduates from Hammond High Schools who attend, who attend an accredited two or four year college or university. Any qualified Hammond resident graduating senior from any of the Hammond High Schools may apply for the one-time scholarship that will be awarded annually. Um, the applications that were submitted from each school, Bishop Knoll had 11 applications out of 44 seniors, Hass had 14 applications out of 49 seniors, Hammond Central had 34 applications out of 401 seniors, Morden had 328 um, seniors and 14 applicants, so seven, 73 applicants out of 800 and 22 seniors in Hammond. So Bishop Knoll will have one scholarship um, awarded today. Hass will have one scholarship awarded today. Hammond Central will have seven scholarships awarded today, and Morden will have six scholarships awarded today, um, with two alternates picked for each school. Um, I'm going to ask Dr. Alsh to come up, um, and she's going to take over from this point, and from my understanding, each council member will pull two names if they choose out of the bag. Thank you for having me here tonight, Hammond Common Council. My name is Dr. Amy Rausch. I recently started with the School City of Hammond. I'm the Executive Director of Secondary Schools. And really, I need to give a big thank you to Lainey Kaminsky, my assistant. She really spearheaded this project and um, really uh, made sure that we uh, received all of those applications. But I just want to say thank you on behalf of all the seniors and the families here in Hammond that uh, they are going to pursue um, their education beyond uh, their once they graduate from K-12 um, in their respective school districts. So at this point, um, I believe, oh, right here. <laughs> we will begin with uh, Bishop Knoll. So if you could come up and Oh, thank you. So, uh, Sari Kwazda, I'm probably pronouncing this um, incorrectly, but I apologize if I did that. But that uh, will be the winner from Bishop Knoll and then two alternates. <clears throat> Should we read out the alternates as well? Jacqueline Garcia. Emily Lynch is the other one, so thank you. And each respective councilman, if you will pull two from this point on. Huh? Each respective councilman will pull two from each, two people from each, so each person will pull two out of the bags. Yep, so now I have Hammond Central High School. Um, Do you have to be a graduate to pull? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, so we'll draw two and two alternates. Oh, no, I have Hammond Central. Oh, Cass, Cass is next. Yes. 
Oh, sorry. And they're, they're due. Hast is up next. They, they, they draw one winner and two alternates. Edwin Zarco will be the winner. And now two alternates. Yalatsin Meza. Who was that again? <coughs> oh, uh, Meza. Meza, yes. Okay. Oh, Yalatsin. Yeah. And Arias Moraga. That was one repeat that, please? one alternate. Uh, <coughs> would yeah. you repeat those yes. names again, please? Mm -hmm. There is no second. Alternate Edwin Zarco. Got that one. Winner. The two alternates. Arielis Mayorga and Yoletsin Mesa. M-E-Z-A. M-E-Z-A. Thank you. Okay, now Hammond Central High School. <clears throat> and you'll draw two and two alternates. Oh, no. Seven, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, it was seven. <laughs> Okay, Amber Bell, oops, you have a few more to draw. Amber Bell and Shamaya Barksdale. I was going to do Morton. That's all. I'll do it. Oh. I'm going to do Morton. Don't go nowhere, Barry. I got to run the meeting. Ellen Barksdale. Angelica Bahana. Who? Uh, Angelica Bahana. Bahana? Can you get her? Cesar Garcia. Cesar Garcia. Councilwoman Tyler. I'm Alexander. <coughs> Yasmin Burgos. <laughs> Simone Ross. That's seven, correct? And two alternates. Alternate Fernando Moreno. And Rashad Shine. And the last alternate is Rashad Shine. Okay. And we have Morton High School. And we're going to draw six and two alternates. Jason Sanchez. Emmanuel Winfrey. <laughs> Zion Pellot. Ryan. 
cayenne peppers. April Burnham. And Hayden Luter. And then two alternates. Uh, Jessica Fogarty. <laughs> and Ernesto Rojo. That's it. Thank you very much. And again, thank you very much for this. Mr. President. Councilwoman Alexander. On May 9th, we're asking that all those scholarship recipients will be here um, in council chambers at 6 p.m. to be awarded those specific scholarships. Um, I was, a, in 2001, I was a scholarship recipient of the Hammond Common Council Scholarship. And I just want to let parents know the scholarship is so simple um, to fill out, literally. Um, so for those that are juniors that are getting ready to be seniors next year, we truly encourage you to fill out the application. This is probably one of the simplest applications I've ever seen. You don't have to fill out um, and do a survey or anything like that. So I really encourage our residents to take advantage of filling out for the actual scholarship. Thank you. Just, you can shake your head no if I'm wrong. This scholarship is part of the original developmental agreement, correct? No? Development over there by uh, tourism center. Okay. Microphone? Is that how it works, Phil? It works. I, I actually didn't hear the original. No, the, the, the scholarship's <laughs> made available by a grant from, by the visitor center, is that correct? Well, is it Bill Wellman? Mr. Yes, it was. Yes, yes it yes. was. Uh, yes, it was Bill Wellman. In fact, it was Councilman <clears throat> Zabrenik from the 5th District uh, that uh, negotiated for that because they wanted, a, I think it was a $1.2 million tax grant to develop the Optimus parcel right off of Kennedy. And to do, the, to do that, they needed to elevate the land out of the floodplain, so the council agreed to give the tax abatement in that time, and Bill Weinman uh, out of gratitude, uh, he set up the scholarship for the for the kids in the city of Hammond. But and that's going on Brandon. 30 years now. Yes. Well, thank you to the Wellman family. Um, item number five: approval of minutes. President. Councilman Spitali. Motion accept the minutes for March 28, 2022, and be placed on file, please. Second. Motion has been made by Councilman Spitali, seconded by. Was that? Councilman Emerson? Yes. Yes. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Clerk Golick, roll call. Alexander? Yes. Spatelli? Yes. Venez? Yes. Kalwinski? Yes. Torres? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Emerson? Yes. Rakels? Yes. Warpel? Yes. Let the record show nine in favor, zero <coughs> opposed. Item number six, approval of claims. Mr. President. Councilman Rakos. I'd like to pass for claims for claims dated 331-22, ending with claims dated 4-6 of 22, claim number 2019 through claim number 2337 in the amount of $2,863,878.87. Second. Motion has been made by Councilman Rako, seconded by Councilwoman Venez. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Councilman Rakos. I'd like to amend in claim number 2338 to serve pro of Kankakee County in the amount of $12,340. Second. Motion has been made by Councilman Rako, seconded by Councilwoman Venez. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Clerk Golick, roll call on the amendment. Alexander. Yes. Spitelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski. Yes. Torres. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Rakos. Yes. Orpo. 
Yes, let the record show the amendment passes. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Uh, Clerk Gullick, roll call on the claims as amended. Alexander. Yes. Spitelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski. Yes. Torres. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Rakels. Yes. Warple. Yes, let the record show. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Item number seven, public hearings. There are none. Item number eight, communications. Does anybody have anything under communications? Mr. President. Councilman Torres. Received a letter here from Urban School. The principal is asking for donations for a project uh, named uh, Mass Toolboxes is to help students grow in the number sense. So please donate uh, to fellow uh, colleagues, please donate generously. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything under communications? Mr. President. Councilman Tyler. I'd just like to announce that on Thursday, April 28th, the School City of Hammond uh, will be doing the actual renaming of Maywood Elementary to Annie Burns Hicks Elementary School. Uh, that'll start at 10 a.m. Um, at Annie Burns Hicks Elementary. Along with that, there will also be a showing of the documentary uh, this Wall Must Come Down, which was uh, put together by Mr. Roland Parrish from Hammond. Um, that'll begin at 6 p.m. that same day, Thursday, April 28th, at Morton High School uh, in the auditorium. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Does anybody else have anything under communications? Mr. President. Councilman Rakos. Hessville Commerce and Community Creative HC3 invites everyone to the 2022 kickoff event be a Thursday, April 14th at 5 p.m. at the Hanson Community Center, 2823 Martha. It's the old Hanson Branch Library. They want to show off the, the new uh, Hanson Community Center. Also, there'll be drinks and appetizers and information about the exciting changes coming to Hessville, including Live in the Ville on June 3rd and 4th. Thank you. All right, Councilman Tyler, when you talked about the uh, showing of Mr. Parrish's film, is that open to the public and there, is there any charge for it? Correct, yes, it is open to the open and free to the public. You do have to reserve your tickets on Eventbrite. Um, if you just search for this wall must come down, you'll be able to find it. Um, but yeah, it is free and open to the public. But they have to be reserved on, what was the site again? Uh, Eventbrite. Eventbrite. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything under communications? Does anybody else have anything under communications? Hearing none, communications are now closed. Item number nine, committee reports. Mr. President. Councilwoman Venez. Uh, yes, uh, council as a whole will be bringing out 2214. Uh, and also I have uh, an update on the uh, Capital Improvements Board and Crime Watch. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, the Capital Improvements Board met on April 4th. Items that were approved were uh, $3,709.65 for the conversion of Russell Street to a two-way street um, west of Homan. Uh, $50,000 was approved for geotechnical services for the Little Calumet River pedestrian bridge. Uh, and incidentally, the Russell Street project is in the second district. Uh, the uh, uh, Little Calumet River pedestrian, pedestrian bridge is in the fourth district. Uh, we approved $226,700 to United Consulting for 117th Street reconstruction from Caroline to Calumet Avenue uh, for the design that is in the first district. Uh, we also approved 
$8,150 for uh, the design of the expansion of the sportsplex that is with American Structure Point, and that is in the third district. Uh, the next meeting will be April 18th. The work study session begins at 4.30, and the meeting will uh, follow that at 5 p.m. Uh, the uh, community and crime watch groups. Uh, coming up at Mount Zion Pleasant View Plaza on Wednesday, April 20th at 1 p.m., uh, they will meet a, let me see, Edison Community Watch will meet at Edison School on Wednesday, May 4th, beginning at 6.30 p.m. Uh, Harrison Park will not meet on May 3rd because of the election uh, they will meet then on June 7th uh, will be the next meeting for Harrison Park. Hessville Crime Watch is not going to meet uh, at the Gene Shepherd Center on uh, Thursday, April 21st. Instead, all of the residents from Hessville are being invited to attend the meeting at the, uh, of the South Holman Avenue Neighborhood Watch at the uh, Trinity Lutheran Church on 173rd and Holman. That will begin at 6.30 p.m. So all the Hessville residents uh, come to South Hammond and, uh, and have uh, your meeting there. And of course, any questions that you have regarding the Hessville area will be answered by uh, Sergeant Scott Holbrook, uh, who is the community policing officer for South Hammond as well as Hessville. Whiting Roberts Dale will meet Thursday, April 14th at St. Joseph's College, beginning at 6.30 <coughs> p.m. Uh, as of late, there have been uh, several issues that have been brought up at uh, the Crime Watch meetings. And I just want to encourage our residents to come and speak to the community policing officer, speak to the um, code enforcement representatives who are in attendance at these meetings because they can help you with an issue that you're having. Um, it doesn't matter what area of the city you are from, you are more than welcome to attend any of the meetings and get the answers to your questions um, uh, answered. And uh, don't be afraid to call 911 if you see anything suspicious, uh, if it just doesn't feel right, call 911. The police would much rather get a call about something that turns out to be nothing than for you to not call them about something that turns into something. Because community is not just about me, it's about us. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Does anybody have anything else on the committee reports? Anybody have anything else on the committee reports? Hearing none, committee reports are now closed. Item number 10, ordinance, third reading and final passage. Item A, ordinance 22-14. The petitioners, Department of Planning and Development, and the sponsors are Councilman Torres and Councilwoman Venez. An ordinance of the Common Council of the City of Hammond, Indiana, upon recommendation of the Hammond Economic Development Commission, designating a certain area within the city as a economic development target area pursuant to Indiana Code 6-1.1-12.1. Mr. President. Councilman Venez. I move for final passage of 2214. Second. Motion's been made by Councilman Venez, seconded by Councilman Spitali. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Councilwoman Venez. Uh, yes, this is just the next in a series of steps 
that need to be taken for us to approve the tax abatement for the ATG Rimbach project. Is there any other discussion? Is there any other discussion? Is there any other discussion? Clerk Golick, roll call. Alexander. Yes. Spitelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski. Yes. Torres. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Rakels. Yes. Warple. Yes, let the record show nine in favor, zero opposed. President Warple, that concludes the ordinances for final passage. Thank you, Clerk Gullick. Moving on to item number 11, introduction of ordinances. Item A. Ordinance 22-15, sponsored by Councilman Spitelli. An ordinance creating a new fund, fund number 2465, for the City of Hammond Police Department for FY 2022 Stop Arm Violation Enforcement Save Grant Funds. Mr. President. Councilman Spitelli. First and second reading, refer to Council as a whole with the meeting set for 25th of April, 2022. Second. What time was that? 5.15. Motion's been made for Council as a whole, seconded by, by Councilman Spitali, seconded by Councilman Emerson. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Councilman Spitali. The ordinance uh, came through on uh, 22R03, was adopted and approved on the 28th of February. And it's about the police uh, will be targeting the stop arm violations and unsafe driving around school. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? Clerk Gullick, roll call on the motion. Alexander. Yes. Spitelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski. Yes. Torres. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Rakels. Yes. Warple. Yes, let the record show. Nine in favor, zero opposed. President Warple, that concludes the reading of the introduction of ordinances. Thank you, Clerk Golick. Item number 12, resolutions. Item A, resolution 22R-07. The petitioners of the planning department and the council sponsors are Councilman Torres and Councilwoman Venez. A resolution of the Hammond City Council granting Plaza LLC an assessed valuation deduction, a tax abatement, for qualified tangible real property pursuant to Indiana Code 6-1.1-12.1. Mr. President. Councilwoman Benez. I move for final passage of 22R07. Second. Motion has been made by Councilwoman Venez, seconded by Councilman Torres. Is there any discussion? Yes, Mr. President. Councilwoman Venez. This is the final step in regard to the tax abatement for um, ATG Rimbach. And this is our vote on this will give approval of their statement of benefits, which is included in your packet. Is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, Clerk Golick, roll call. Alexander. Yes. Spitelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski. Yes. Torres. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Rakels. Yes. Orpel. Yes, let the record show. Nine in favor, zero opposed. Before we move to item 13, I'll remind the public there's a clipboard up front if you want to speak during public expression for three minutes. We need you to sign it. Um, item number 13, new and unfinished business. Um, do we... <laughs> Clerk Gullick, do we have a BZA request there, 2216? Item A, 2216, a petition of 
Tijuana Petroleum Incorporated for variance of the use regarding ES 10.113, a automobile fueling station to allow, allow construction of a convenience store as an accessory to the automobile fueling station in a C1 local commercial district located at 403 Goslin within the city of Hammond, Lake County, Indiana. Councilman Kowinski. I move for passage of 22-16. Second. Motion's been made for passage of 22-16 by Councilman, Councilman Kowinski, seconded by Councilman Emerson. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Uh, Councilman Kowinski. Thank you. This uh, came through the Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, the gas station owner purchased a property behind it, allowing it to expand. So their intention is to build a new convenience store where the old one, re uh, and demolish and remove the old one. The convenience store will be larger as a result of that because of the property that they annexed and it will be going from a C4 to a C1. Zoning uh, approved all the conditions that were worked on uh, through several meetings, uh, including uh, uh, hours of operation and when fueling of the uh, underground tanks would occur. Uh, as well as the location of the store and ingress and egress, uh, as well as some pavement. Uh, so it, all in all, it will be a nice uh, refreshment of this, the corner at home and in Goslin. And uh, uh, I, I agree that this should move forward. It's a good, it's a benefit to the district as well as to the operators. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Is there any further discussion on the motion? Is there any further discussion on the motion? Clerk Golick, roll call on the motion. Alexander. Yes. Spatelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Kalwinski. Yes. Torres. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Rakos. Yes. Orpel. Yes, let the record show nine in favor, zero opposed. The motion carries. Is there anything else on the new and unfinished business? Mr. President. Councilman Tyler. Uh, I think a couple weeks ago, it was brought up around uh, a traffic issue around Andy Byrne 6 Elementary School, the former Maywood Elementary School. I just want to update the public that we were able to host a meeting with representatives from our engineering department, as well as representatives from the school city of Hammond, uh, the head of the transportation department and the head of their safety division were both part of that meeting, as well as I want to say our consultant from, uh, I can't think of the name of our traffic consultant. Uh, if anybody's here, Phil, do you know the name of the first group? The first group, yes. Um, uh, representative from first group was there as well. And so we took a look at um, traffic patterns around Andy Burns Hicks Elementary. They also raised concerns around traffic around uh, Kenwood Elementary, as well as Morton High School. So we were able to review all three of those. Um, and they're going to continue to do their study. Hopefully before the end of this month, they'll have a recommendation on how we should move forward to make all of the traffic patterns around the three of those schools uh, safer for uh, the children and the parents who are dropping and picking up their children and, and the staff there too. So um, I'll follow back up to let the rest of the council and everyone know from our perspective what we have to do as a city to support that. Um, but a lot of what we looked at is just ways that the school city can adjust their uh, patterns and the way that they release um, and allow students to be dropped off um, from their perspective too. So I'll keep you all updated, but just wanted to give that update. Anybody else have anything on the new and unfinished business? Does anybody else have anything on the new and unfinished business? Does anybody else have anything on the new and unfinished business? Hearing none, new and unfinished business is now closed. The final item is public expression. Barb Hargrove, you've signed up first, and it says Earth Day. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for taking care of business. 
My name is Barb Hargrove, and some friends and I are sponsoring an Earth Day celebration for the city of Hammond, and I came to invite all of you to come. I have a little packet here that's um, in both English and Spanish. I don't know if any of you do newsletters for your um, district or you could pay, uh, post something on your Facebook page or whatever, but um, I'm giving you something that you can uh, share with your neighbors, your constituents. But um, it's all about learning about healthy eating, community gardens, the importance of native plants and pollinators. This is a family-friendly event. We have great speakers. We have giveaways, art activities for children, music, and just anything you can think of. It's, we're really excited about it. But we got to have you there to make it successful. So um, got the word out. Unfortunately, I didn't get there in time to have the newsletter for the water bill. So um, that way, everybody would know about it. But um, we're having uh, art contests with the school systems. So we got the, the kids involved. There's a lot of kids who are involved in environmental groups in the city. We've been talking with them, science teachers and um, principals and everything. But I'm um, just really excited about it. We have a Native American who's going to bless the land in the beginning. We have um, the monarch mama, Dolly Foster, who is um, all about pollinators. She's going to be there. And um, just have all kinds of giveaways, plants, seeds. Um, it's just going to be wonderful. And we just love to have you there. And, Get your people to come out and um, enjoy the beautiful day, beautiful park. It's from 12 to 2 on Saturday, uh, April 23rd. Earth Day is actually Friday, but you know, everybody's working or doing something in school on Friday, so we're having it on Saturday. And we just love to have you come, and hopefully, it can be an annual event. So we're hoping. So I have these <coughs> pass out. I don't know. Which Mark, would Do you, you have copies, or our council secretary here can make, can make nine copies for all of us? Oh. I was just going to make sure everybody had one, but okay. I was going to give one to Phil to put in the mini office, and if you could make more later on, that would be okay. awesome. Thank you so much. I so appreciate you. Thank you. Barb, talk. Barb yeah. uh, and the location, did I miss that? Hessville Park. Hessville Park. Mm -hmm. okay, the you. pavilion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. That's um, the second speaker is Jeff, but I can't make out the last name he left okay final speaker is uh, George Steyer Robert Steyer when it says General Biz <laughs> General Biz B-I-Z oh, last time we were here Kevin Smith mentioned something about the uh, problem with the uh, pilot uh, payment of the water and uh, sanitary district, and I was hoping to hear some developments. Do you guys know anything about uh, whether, they're, whether they can meet this nut? Or because I was hearing, as you can remember, about all these extra costs and all this stuff, and I mean the whole propaganda machine. That's what I, how I viewed it. Sorry to be so cynical, but I've become that way. About how you know, next thing you know, a new ordinance is going to come up, and we're going to be uh, hit for another charge. Or at least I'm perceiving it wrong. Clarify me, please. George, I know we're not supposed to comment, but I never heard anything about a new ordinance coming up with changes to any of those pilot payments. That well, wasn't that spoken that night. He just made us aware that the cost of chemicals to the water and sanitary district have gone up, and he made us aware of there may be some adjustments to the budget, if I understand that correctly, Megan. That was all I heard, and that's all I think everybody on the council heard. Well, is our, our adjustments to the budget code for raise, uh, adjustments to our rates? That's what I'm concerned about. That's the issue here, because you, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't want your ability to, um, because you can work through ordinance rather than through contract, that we become an ATM machine here. I didn't, I, maybe I shouldn't have commented, because I'm not supposed to, okay. but. What I'm saying is all I heard was pilot payments and adjustments to the budget. I never heard anything about rates going up. Well, okay. I was asking at large. I was just clarifying. That's all. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, signify. Clerk Golick, roll call. Alexander. Yes. Spatelli. Yes. Venez. Yes. Galwinski. Yes. Torres. 
Yes. Tyler. Yes. Emerson. Yes. Rakos. Yes. Warple. Yes.